how to create a coloring book from scratch using PowerPoint. Hi, Kerry here from Dream Creator B and welcome to our channel where we show you how to make money online with KDP Low Content Books and Etsy with new training every week. So be sure to hit the big red subscribe button below. Today, what am I showing you? I am showing you how to take an image from Vecteasy and then make it into a coloring book using PowerPoint and just using PowerPoint, not going into any other graphic packages. So before we start, I'm going to show you Vecteasy and I'm going to show you some other places that you can actually get hold of SVGs because that is what we're going to be using. And the reason why we're using SVGs is because they are easy to convert and make them different from what they already are. We can break them apart. We can take the color out of them. We can add things to them. We can even make dot to dot and paint by number using them. And I will be creating two more videos showing you how that is done. So here we are at Vecteasy and Vecteasy you have you can use it free without purchasing a pro license but you must attribute Vecteasy and the artist of the images that you have used. So you need to put that in your coloring book somewhere. Now if you don't want to do that you can join the pro and you get unlimited use of images because in the free version you also get limited amount of images there are some images that you can't use but with the pro it's 108 dollars for the year and monthly it's 14 dollars a month then there's another great place that does svgs and it does vector images pngs jpegs it gives you the whole lot is daily art hub and you can get the entire site for 20 dollars or you can upgrade to 30 dollars where you get the updates that come as well and there is quite a a huge selection and it is growing daily but you also get free daily clip art and today the daily clip art is something to do with gardening as you can see so if you're not wanting to purchase go and check daily art hub out to see what their free clip art is and again creative fabrica also sometimes has free ones as well but then there's another site that's also free and that's called public domain vectors and from here you can even select the format that you want is svg but if you don't find the picture you want that's an svg and it's an ai and eps we've got you covered there as well okay so that is just a walkthrough so what I've done is I've gone to Vecteasy, I've had a look for some images. So say we wanted to do this one, which is Farm Yarm Admiral. As you can see, I have not got an account. I'm not logged in here. And it says free download. So if you click free download, you need to choose that one there and you need to put the attribution in that comes there. So that's what you need to do. So I've already downloaded. And the problem with Vecteasy, a lot of their files comes either as EPS, JPEG or AI. And we don't actually want that. What we want to do is we want to convert it to SVG and you can do that with using a web-based software called Convertio which is free as well and I'll leave the link in the description so all you need to do is you choose the file that you want to upload and let me go here and we want to upload that EPS file and again you will see here that the PDF there is the license agreement that again mentions you need to put an attribution in your book or on your printables or wherever you're using the free version, you must put that attribution. So EPS. And another thing I want to tell you about is if you are using fonts in your book or anything like that, make sure it's for commercial use and not personal use unless you are personally just printing out the coloring pages for yourself to use or say you're a teacher and you're using it in your own classroom for your own students to use and you are not selling it that is fine but if you are selling it you need to be buying the commercial use or finding free commercial use to use do not use personal use so here we are we've uploaded the file that says eps and then if we click there image we want svg or i could have gone down to vector and again chosen svg so again all i do is click convert and it's uploading and it will create me a nice file that i can then download so it's busy converting so we'll leave that while it's doing that and go to powerpoint so here we are in powerpoint and i'm on a mac but this works for windows as well don't forget powerpoint is made for windows so here we are and I need to change the size. Most children's coloring books, and that's what we're going to start with, 
is 8.5 by 11 or 8 by 10. So all we need to do is go into Design, click Slide Size, Page Setup, and then here change it to 8.5. And if we were doing Bleed, it would be 8.625 and 11 to 0.25 but we're not we're not doing any bleed i'm going to click ok and it says scale up but as soon as i've got nothing there it doesn't matter so i'm just going to get rid of this because i want a blank page now i've already chosen an image that i want to use so i'm going to go insert and picture you can drag and drop but you actually get pixelation when you drag and drop because powerpoint is used for the screen so especially on a mac it puts it back down to 72 dpi and we want to keep the dpi as high as possible for our image so that is the reason why i'm doing insert picture from file so here we go i'm not using that one i'm actually going to use this one that i converted using the same process so I'm going to go back there anyway and download that because I may use it at some point. So I've gone back there. And as you can see, this is a nice image and it's got lots on it that I can be using and putting into different images and using for different things. So here we are. Can you see that it's on graphic format there and it says here convert to shape? That's exactly what we want to do. We want to convert it to shape. Now, everything is still all stuck together, but it has changed to a shape format and that is what we wanted. So I could click there and it'll start doing all its nice little tricks for me. So what I want to do is I'm going to change it all now so that it is black and white. And in where it says shape fill, I'm going to change it to white and then I'm going to change it to black for the outline. And as you can see, it's all come back. And some of them need changing, they need improving these different things. So I'm going to just insert a new blank slide. And I'm actually going to take this chicken because it's one of my favorites. But to do that, I need to now ungroup. So I right click, ungroup, and it's ungrouped everything for me, which I'm happy about. So now, because I just want this hen here, and I might fetch other things. I'm going to group that so I can copy it, copy, and I'm going to paste. So, oh, I have missed something. So I've resized it, and the beauty about SVGs and vector images is the whole point, you can resize it, and it's not going to become pixelated. You can resize it up or down. So I'm going to ungroup it again because I want to get rid of things that shouldn't be there. So like these funny legs that are missing from the other little chickens. I'm going to get rid of that, get rid of that. Ungroup. So everything now should be ungrouped. That's it. Get rid of that. Might leave the leaf, but I'm going to get rid of the little chicken thing. But I'll get rid of that as well but I might use it in another image. So there we are. Now, there are some problems here. As you can see on the leg, his foot or her foot, because it's a hen, looks a bit weird. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a union. So I'm going to go union and it's put them together it I've still got a little funny shape there but that doesn't matter and there and then I'm going to union that as well there we go so as you can see it's moved all the lines there from that and I'm quite happy with that and I'm going to fill the eye to black so I'll show you well oh. these little shapes here I don't actually want them in because it's a children's coloring book and I want them to be able to have the whole area to color in all I need to do is actually just click make sure that I'm on shape shape format and then I can just click in here without clicking there make sure you actually click on each shape because if you don't 
it brings up the whole thing. So I'm just going to get what I can and I'll speed this up. And I'm going to delete that one left, get rid of that, and again do the same thing here, making sure that I click on all the shapes that I want to specifically move. So that's my first picture done. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to group that so I can move it around and put different things that I may want. So I may want to do something else with that, or I might want to put another chicken there. I might put that one above. Make sure I'm fitting without going over the margins. And I might think about putting that one in there. So I can all I do is just highlight that again and group it to bring it across. It's, if I want to resize it so it doesn't go a bit weird, I hold the shift key down and drag, and then it'll resize the proper way. So again, I'm going to ungroup that because there are things in there that I don't want. Group, ungroup. And I can get rid of what I don't want, which is there. Don't want that one there. This eye, I want to actually fill it because it's a bit weird. Let's fill better. And again, I can union these. Next. I think I've got everything there. Union. It's union the legs for me. And then I could just go around and delete what I don't want. But I certainly don't like that eye, so I'm going to draw one back in. Select them all. I'm holding the shift key down. That is all I'm doing. I'm making sure I actually go right over the image, and that's that done. And I'm actually going to delete that. And all I do to put something else back is go here, insert shape, draw out my eye, holding the shift button down will give me a nice round one, change it, and there we go. So there the eye is back in a lot better. So I can go back and group that again. I'm sure I've got the legs in. Right click, group. That is that image done there. So I can add little things in. I could add little pieces of grass or little flowers or anything like that at the bottom, or I could add some seeds in. So we could just insert and draw some shapes so that it looks like seeds. So that is that one picture done and you can add a text as well. I'm going to insert some word art. I'm going to put that in. I could do that. And then I'm going to change the text fill to no fill and I'm going to change the outline to black. So now that can be colored in and you can actually change As well. So that can be coloured in, make it a bigger size. So what you could do with this page is actually put a black rectangle on it. Now if you are going to do this you need to actually add bleed to your whole page, to your whole book. And then what you can do here is make the shape fill black. And then if people colour in 
with felt tips or markers it does not bleed through so but you would need to actually make it a full bleed because this is seen as an image and it's going right across your page now you could do a color background to it as well because you are in powerpoint so you would just go to design and you could change format background and you could change it to solid fill and do that and again that's the same thing so you can then choose a new slide insert new blank one and that should give you a white one again you can go back to this image or you can bring in a new one so that's how you begin to create a coloring book from scratch using powerpoint and S. VGs. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button in the little B above my head and also check out my video about removing colour using PNGs and JPEGs in PowerPoint.